Hello, you're listening to Ovarian Cancer Connect. I'm your host, Dr. John Nakayama. This podcast is sponsored by AstraZeneca. Let's get started. Thank you for joining us for episode number three titled HRD What, HRD Why. I'm joined today by Dr. Alex Olawaya and Dr. Joshua Kesterson. I'm Dr. John Nakayama, and today we're going to be talking about homologous recombination deficiency, otherwise known as HRD, and what exactly that means. I think there's a lot of confusion within the community about what is HRD? What do all these terms mean? Dr. Olawai, can you help clear up some of this? HRD refers to a dysfunction of the homologous recombination DNA repair pathway as detected by a genetic testing or tumor testing for BRCA and for measures of HRD genomic instability such as loss of heterozygosity, large-scale state transitions, and telomeric allelic imbalance. For a long time, we thought, for instance, in talking about cancer, that HRD only occurs with BRCA1 and BRCA2 genetic mutations, and now we know that it's not limited to just the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. So, HRD generally refers to a situation where, for whatever reason, the cell is no longer able to accomplish homologous recombination, a type of DNA damage repair. So, Alex, you and I do a lot of testing, and we know what goes into it. I think there's some confusion out there by other things that may not be HRD testing. Are there any of those that come to mind? Yes. HRD testing must be distinguished very clearly from other tests like tumor mutation budding, microsatellite instability, PD-1, and PDL one Those are specific tests that are biologically defined in what they're testing for. They're not broad-based tests like HRD, and the utility of these tests are very different from the utility of HRD. There are a variety of testing regimens, and people are starting to use HRD testing in their practice. Dr. Kesterson, I know you're on top of these things. Has HRD testing changed your practice? Do you feel like you've changed how you treat patients since all this came about? Yeah, that's a great question, Dr. Nakayama, regarding the clinical utility of HRD testing. And I think it offers an opportunity to kind of discuss what the clinical situation is for these patients and what they're going through. We know that a majority of ovarian cancer cases are diagnosed at an advanced stage. Initial treatment will consist of a combination of surgery and cytotoxic chemotherapy. And despite initial responses, unfortunately, a majority of these women will ultimately recur. What we'd like to do is delay that recurrence as long as possible. And while I tell my patients it's never obviously a good time to have ovarian cancer, certainly it's better to be diagnosed now than it was even 10 years ago. And that's in large part driven by our ability to make therapeutic decisions based on biomarker status. We know from clinical trials that approximately 50% of patients are HRD positive and are potentially going to be more receptive to treatment with PARP inhibitors. So I think in this setting, when we have additional data points that can guide not only prognosis, but also therapeutic choices, it's incumbent upon us to make the best next choice of treatment for these patients so we can optimize their outcomes. I totally agree with you guys. This has been practice changing for me. I routinely test my patients for BRCA and HRD status. So that's HRD in a nutshell. Please join us for the podcast where we discuss the implementation of HRD testing. We hope that we provided you with some useful information on HRD testing today and that you may be able to carry out some of these changes in your practice. Thanks so much for listening.